Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting the runs test using SPSS. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data that I'll be using in this example. And I'm going to be demonstrating how to conduct the runs test. Now the runs test looks at the order of occurrence of two values in a variable. And it's determining whether that order is random or not. And it's based on the concept of a run. And a run is a sequence of like observations. So I'll demonstrate this with a continuous level variable and with a nominal level variable. So I'll start here with continuous. So we have this variable functioning and we have 30 records, 30 points for this functioning variable. And let's say this is the same participant who has been tested multiple times using an instrument that measures functioning. And we consider the value 45 as the cutoff value. So a value of higher than 45 would indicate the participant is functioning well. A value of below 45 would indicate the participant is not functioning well. And we want to see if the functioning well or not functioning well observations are random in terms of order. So we'll go to Analyze and Non-Parametric Tests, over to Legacy Dialogues, and then over to Runs. And this is what the Runs Test dialog looks like by default. Notice under Cut Point, Median is checked off by default. Mode, Mean, and Custom are not checked off. So here for this continuous variable functioning, I'm going to move that variable over to the Test Variable List. And I'm going to add the descriptives here under options as well. Press continue. And then for cut point, normally here for a variable like functioning, we would specify a cut point using custom. And I'm going to do that. So it's custom and 45. That's the cutoff value for this particular instrument. I'm going to leave median checked off and I'm going to check off mode and mean just to show you what the output looks like. But normally you would only select just the one, in this case just custom. So click OK to run the test and we can see we have a sample size of 30, we have the mean standard deviation, the lowest and highest scores here for this variable functioning. So we have the tables for the runs test and it's going to give us four because we had the mean, median mode and the cutoff value that we specified, the custom cutoff value. So you can see here for median, the test value 52. And using that as a cutoff point, we had 14 cases less than the test value, 16 cases greater than or equal to the test value. And we had 18 runs. And the significance is 0.559. So it's not statistically significant. So we would say here that the order is random. And for mean, that was median, 52. For mean, 50.93. Again, still 18 runs in this case. And the distribution is a little different in terms of the cases less than the test value and greater than or equal to. And that gives us a different p-value, in this case 0.504. Moving down to mode, the mode's 44. And this only gives us four cases below the test value and 26 cases greater than or equal to the test value, nine runs instead of 18. And that increases the probability value, 0.634. And then looking at the value that we specified, 45, we have 12 runs, using that as the cutoff value, and 0.911 is the probability. So it's not statistically significant. So for all these cases, we would say that the order is random. Of course, the only one we're really interested in would be the one where we specified the cutoff value. So now let's take a look at a nominal level variable. I'm going to use gender here as an example. And let's say that all these selections of male and female were made by a researcher selecting participants. And we want to see if the order the participants were selected in is random. And we can see here we know we have male and female, 
as the two levels here of gender, so we can easily count the number of runs. And again, you're going to have a run for each sequence of like observations. So this first, these first three records, male, this is one run. And then we have seven females selected in a row. That's the second run. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then this last run of four males is 13. So we have 13 runs in this variable gender. And again, we want to know if the order is random. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Nonparametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, and again to Runs. And I'm going to reset. Reset the Runs Test Dialog back to default. And this time I'm going to move over Gender. Again, I'll check off Descriptives. And here I am going to check off Median, Mode, and Mean again. Although normally, of course, you would not with a nominal level variable. And I'm going to check off custom. Now, these values are coded as 0 and 1. Male is coded as 0, and female is coded as 1. So we need a cut point that's in between those two values. So I'm going to enter 0.5. So we have a custom cut point of 0.5, and I checked off these other values just to demonstrate. So click OK. And you can see we have the mean standard deviation. Again, the minimum maximum we know is going to be 0 and 1. And we look at the runs test for median. Notice there's 13 runs here, a non-statistically significant result. Again, for the mean, 13 runs. Doesn't change. And the test value here for mode is 1. So again, that's 13 runs. So, so in this case, the p-value is the same for the median, mean, and mode. And looking at the test value of 0.5, which again, this is the run, runs test that we're going to interpret here, runs test 4, we do have the same p-value, 0.364. It's not statistically significant. We would assume the order is random. I notice again, 13 runs. It's the same for all these output tables. So the question becomes, how does the runs test move to a statistically significant level? Would we need more runs? We have 13 here, and the p-value is 0.364. Would we need more runs or fewer runs? So to answer that question, let's go back to the variable. And we can see we can make just a few changes here and reduce the number of runs. We have 13 now. So where I have male here on record 11, I'm going to change that to female, and for record 13, change that to female and record 19. So I've reduced the number of runs. Now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 runs. So I went from 13 to 7. So back to analyze, and again over to the runs test, and I'm going to uncheck mode, median, mean. To demonstrate this part. Leave the custom specified at 0.5 and click OK. And we can see we have a statistically significant result. However, I could also increase the number of runs. So moving back to this gender variable, I'm going to make it so that male and female alternate. And I'm going to do that by pasting in zeros and ones that I have recorded on an Excel workbook. So I'm going to move up here to this A1, so you can see this more clearly. You have zeros and ones here. And I'm just going to paste in a sequence where 0 and 1 alternate. So 0 and 1, 0, 1, all the way down. Male, female, all the way down. So this means we'll have 30 runs in this example. So again, analyze non-parametric tests and over to runs. I'm going to run the same test here and you can see it is statistically significant. So what happens here with the runs test is if you have too many or too few runs you have a statistically significant result. So in both of these last two cases we have statistical significance. In the last case we have 30 runs that was 
too many to have a non-statistically significant finding. And in the example for that, we had seven runs, and that was too few to have a non-statistically significant finding. So in both of those examples, the order was not random. I hope you found this video on conducting the runs test in SPSS to be helpful. Thanks for watching.